Coke and I grew up in New York and I'm back in New York again having lived in England and around the world, just recently Brooklyn. What I witnessed, it was post-59, was all the tens of thousands of Tibetan refugees had come and Darjeeling was one of the most vibrant and in a way unstable places. It was very, very interesting to me. Sikkim was very different in feeling from Darjeeling, that Darjeeling was this uh, great ravel of different uh, lines coming in and uh, a, a sense of uh, contest that there was people were different groups going toe to toe. Sikkim felt hugely uh, harmonious, that there was an enormous sense of their thereness, a sense of order, not in a repressive way, a sense of, of coherence is a better word than order and a sense of development done in a careful way, small mini hydro projects as you cross the border. Um, uh, as Sikkim goes up like an elevator from sea level with its border with India uh, to 28,800 feet, uh, that you have every different flora fauna changing every 10 uh, yards up. No, I didn't think I had a mandate to have a supreme position in education, nor know much. It was never anything I'd studied. I studied history of Asia and culture, but not teaching. It was having kids. And you really wanted, I really wanted my own children to learn from where they were and not from the outside in. And as in many Asian places at the time, or in fact the, much of the world, uh, the education tended to be old British, Indian, very much based on Victorian, outside in, cram the child from the furthest realm. Uh, I wanted my children to grow like plants. What was lovely about Sikkim, it was not a society run by experts. Now, I know NGOs can do such great good and sometimes I'm really envious when I hear about NGOs in Nepal or Bhutan today. They're, we have some in Sikkim, but there are more other places. But what was good about not having, quote, experts or was the ground up, all the teachers were going way out of the box. We ran oral histories to get the material. The school children, the seniors, were helping us tape record massive oral histories and to put into the books, into the curriculum. And um, they also, for the first time, began doing in different language streams to make sure that each language stream read what the other children were reading. There were translations, because in the past, textbooks had uh, grown, the lecture children had been reading Christian uh, books and uh, Nepali-speaking children, books from Nepal, which in turn flowed from India, which in turn flowed from England, all overstamped with illustrations from British train to Indian monkey to Nepal, you know, basketry, whatever. And Tibetan uh, our books had uh, been written really f thinking of Tibetan children, not of, not of Sikhamese. So it was very thrilling. The people from all over and many Indian educators, some of their supreme ones, the head of the University Grants Commission, wanted after retirement to come and work in Sikkim because they were so pleased that here is a place small enough that you could see effect of something good happening because India has such fantastic work they do in so many areas but the problems are so big, the demography is so big that they get swallowed up. You can't really see the sustained happenings. The, the, uh, we started the textbook things around, uh, about 67, 68. I remember I was pregnant at the time. Uh, so they weren't 
published uh, until towards about 1970, and it was difficult. Our second books continued after the um, annexation, but they began to change them and take out different things, so they didn't last too much longer. And the head of the wonderful teacher, Roosevelt Rye, who was the great force behind these, uh, was, uh, uh, began to retire, and it was a shift of ground. But in some ways they continued, because they were copied by Himachal Pradesh and by Bhutan. So I was very, and by New York, for example, which makes me really proud. I haven't been back since the, since I left in 1973. In New York, where we rented, my house was like a mattress shop, full of Sikhamese who were like family, would come from their colleges, wherever, and we'd get together also, especially in times of trouble, they'd sometimes take off a semester, see what they could do now. And we're, we're friends in a deeper way than we could have been in Sikkim. So I am, I have to say, fairly up to the minute in what is happening in Sikkim because it really matters to me. And, and like any little diaspora group, see thing with new news and, and I love being part of that. It's very much, I've internalized Sikkim as my home. Here.